Hey everyone, Jordan here. Welcome to Fantastic Microbes and Where to Find Them. A couple weeks ago I posted my first video and we explored the Provo River underneath the microscope. Now I showed it to a couple of friends and family and they got a little unnerved because they didn't really realize how much awesome stuff you can find, or creepy stuff, or disgusting stuff, depending on your taste, you can find underneath the microscope. And so I got a lot of questions from a lot of friends like, is this stuff in my drinking water? And is this stuff in my swimming pool? And so I decided to tackle these things just kind of one idea at a time. And since it's summer, I decided let's go ahead and explore the swimming pool. So let's go ahead and see what we can find at the pool. So here's the basic plan. We're going to go to my in-laws place. They have a swimming pool in the back and they also have a couple of places that I think have been gathering water uh, for the last couple of months just due to just recent rainstorms and things like that. So we're going to compare and contrast the uh, standing water in the fountains and then also look at the swimming pool. See which one is cleaner and filthier. I'm sure you guys can probably guess which one is which. Uh, as far as my hypothesis, I think we might find maybe a couple little things in the pool, but for the most part, the real action is going to be in the other watery areas. But yeah, let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so we made it to the swimming pool. What we're going to do first is we're going to collect some samples from a couple of other places of standing water that we found here in the backyard. We've got a fountain, we have a couple of pots that have just kind of been collecting rainwater, and they've been sitting there with uh, just some plants and leaves, and we're going to take a look at that, and then we're going to compare and contrast that with what we see in the pool water. Now, uh, just for you guys to see, I've got just a little collection kit here. Uh, I've kind of put it together halfway myself. But here's a, just a Petri dish I got online for just cheap. It was like a dollar. Um, and then this uh, little men's grooming kit I got for like five bucks at a 7-Eleven. Um, and then I just added this little medicine dropper for like 50 cents. So I mean really if you want to start collecting microbes and you want to start cheap, this is easily the best way to do it. And so uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and start with that fountain water. All right, so here's our little fountain here. Now I want you just to pretend that we're at a dentist's office. The best way to clean or to get the most samples of things is by doing a little bit of scraping. So I've got a little petri dish right here and we'll probably scoop up a little bit of the water just kind of around and I might stir up some stuff here too. Um, just get like a little tiny bit and we'll put that on. So I'm just scooping it up with the lid here and then putting it into my actual petri dish. Now, uh, I mentioned the dentist's office thing, so I can do a little bit of scraping and scrubbing with these tweezers. And hopefully you have a better dentist than me. And get lots of that scraped up, floating into the water. Now for you eagle-eyed viewers out there, you might see a couple of things already swimming and moving in here. And you get bonus points for that if you can see some things living in here already. And you can see here I've got my little medicine dropper. Just dropping things. And I'll try to go right in the little light. I don't even know what that thing is. Um, I mean, I think we've got enough stuff. So let's go ahead and take a look at what, maybe a little bit more here. So, let's go ahead and kind of show you guys what we've got here. Backing up, I just have a little sample. You can see there's a couple little scraps in there, and that is plenty to get us started. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like. All right, I'm gonna apply it right here to the uh, glass slide, put the cover slip on, and then we'll go ahead and just stick it right in, see what we got. All right, so here we are at the lowest magnification, uh, which is about 40 times on this microscope. And we can see this is some little green scum, probably some sort of algae. 
Now, I was scrolling around for a little bit. Now, this is on dark field, and so that's why the whole place kind of looks like outer space. Um, it's very, very cool. And the first thing that I wanted to show you guys here is on this piece of algae, we have quite a colony of alien-like critters. So let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit closer and see what these guys are. Alrighty, so uh, these guys are called rotifers. Now, they are super common. You can find them all over the world in all sorts of different places, even in your backyard fountain. Now, I'm doing my best just to focus on about one or two at a time, just because these things are so small that they can swim in and out of focus very, very quickly. Now, rotifers are very, very cool. Um, they get their name from these rotating things on their heads, which spin around. You can kind of see uh, this guy spinning kind of well. No, they're kind of hiding right here. Let's see if we can find some more. Uh, now, the coolest thing about these guys is that they are animals. These are micro animals. Now, they are so small, they are barely detectable by the natural human eye. Um, these guys are so small, you probably wouldn't be able to see them with your actual eyes. Some species you can. Um, but yeah, there's a really good one. Now, if I zoomed in closer with my dark field lens, uh, it doesn't quite catch things very well. So I might switch over to bright field in just a second kind of show you all the cool stuff that's going on with these guys. Now this is uh, this is bright field vision and so you can see them a little bit more clearly uh, in some ways more than others. Oh sorry, bumped the camera there. Uh, let's fix this. Now let's zoom in a little bit more and we'll go even closer and let's see. This is about as close as I can get to these guys without squishing them. So you can see their head a little bit better. They're super cool. Just like cogwheels. Who knows, maybe some guy saw this and it inspired the Industrial Revolution. I mean, people have been looking at microscopes for over like 400 years. The first one was invented, I think about 1602? Uh, by my boy Anton van Leeuwenhoek. Uh, very cool. That guy's not even a scientist. He was just a, a watchmaker. And uh, anyway, we're losing focus here. Let's go ahead and find some more things. All right, so we're back in space here in dark field mode. Uh, this is with the water that I just collected from the pots that I just showed you. Now we're at 40 times again. Now I got a couple of clumps of things. Now this, uh, you can see kind of at the end might be the remains of some sort of insect, uh, plus a bunch of other mush that has been made food for a lot of other microbes. So, but let's go ahead and zoom in closer because I don't think we can really see the full detail of what's going on. You might be able to see a couple of little floaties here. Let's go ahead and zoom in. All right, so this is the next magnification up. This is our, what do we even have on this microscope today? I think it's our 60 times. But anyway, this was the closest we could get with the rotifers before we had to switch to bright field. So that might give you a inkling of how small these little guys are. Uh, I'll definitely have to switch over to bright field soon. But um, I have an idea of what these little guys are, but I might just double check my uh, one of my little reference books before telling you guys. Uh, but it's really cool. Just look at this. They look like fireflies. Look at that. It's little fireflies just all over the place. That's such a beautiful sight. Okay, well, uh, I'll switch over to Brightfield in just a second here. Let's go ahead. All 
All right, so last but not least is we got our pool water and sun's gone down, so we got the lights going. So I've got a separate Petri dish right here and I'm just going to scoop up some of the water and it's nice and warm. So here's our pool water and I decided to zoom out so much that you can even see the circle uh, of the eyepiece right here. And I'm doing that just so you know that I am filming and scrolling around, even though it does, it, at some places it might not look like that there's a lot of movement. Uh, anyway, so let's go ahead and see. So this little circle right here in the middle, that is just an air bubble. And it might have a little leaf on it. If I zoom in and out, it kind of makes the edge of the air bubble look kind of different. So that's kind of cool. Um, there's a little... Uh, fragment of something sometimes it's easy to tell what these things are but sometimes it's not uh, especially when you're just collecting things in fragments now here is maybe another fragment of a twig now this is at 40 times so we're gonna go ahead and zoom in this is probably the biggest thing that I can find here and so yep looks like a little fragment of a twig zooming in and out you can see tiny little air bubbles everywhere that's just uh, kind of what the cover glass slip over the glass slide just kind of does. We're going to zoom in even closer. This is the closest that we zoomed up with the other guys. And yeah, a little twig-like thing. And it's just shaking because my hand, I'm trying to like fix the lens there. So yeah, zooming up, we got a little twig-like thing. Not too exciting. Um, I'm scrolling around right now all over the place. Uh, the rest of the little dots and scrapes that you see are just bubbles and remnants from when I haven't cleaned my lenses. Let's go ahead back out and see if there's anything. Oh, that's the edge of the lens right there. That's what the edge looks like. Hmm, well maybe we need to see some stuff in dark field, so let's go ahead and set that up. Let's see what we've got here. Put in my dark field lens. Um, okay, so you can see a lot more air bubbles, but uh, I don't see any movement. If you guys see movement in any of these things, let me know. Uh, you can see the streaks of the cover glass. That's kind of cool. Looks a little more like space. If you zoom in and out, it looks like you're going into hyperspace, which is kind of cool. Um, other than that, not much living stuff in here. Oh yeah, there's that original twig that we found. Um, I can adjust this to see the little twig. Kind of weird. Zoom in, see the twig. There's a twig. So you can see dark field's kind of cool because it shows you things from different angles. Pretty awesome. But uh, yeah, I think that about wraps it up here. Not much going on. Okay, so what all did we learn here? Well, main thing is that the pool water is generally a lot cleaner than the average standing water that you'll find outdoors. Uh, which is a pretty good thing for the most part. Now, not all bacteria is bad bacteria, however, and uh, just so you know, we'll be exploring in future episodes all the bacteria that is living on your body at all times. There's so much more cool stuff to explore. But I want to know from you guys, what do you want to see under the microscope? We can look at some more living things, we can look at non-living things, the list is endless, goes on and on. I've got a few ideas, but uh, I'd rather just kind of do things the way you guys want to do them. So make sure to comment below, put some questions down. I'll try to answer as many of them as I can, and then I'll be posting another video in a couple of weeks. But until then, I want you guys to have a good time micro hunting yourselves, and remember, enjoy the little things in life. So until then, happy micro hunting and what am I saying? What am I saying? Okay, ready. Action! Action!